Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our review and reaction to Sugar Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. This is a brand new show that has come out on Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. starring Colin Farrell, who gets to drive really nice cars, who gets to, you know, have a very, very fascinating demeanor to be a very I'm a private eye on the scene I get to say a lot of interesting things about Los Angeles where I'm like not full McConaughey and true detective ironically another show that Colin Farrell has appeared in <laughs> but like you know I still get to say weird idioms at times this is a show with a ton of potential through these first two episodes. Oh, there's so much potential. If you are looking for a really good detective show, who done it, you know, what's going on, this is so far the show for you. Like, we're only two episodes in, but yeah. I mean, already they have set up the story so well. We have this missing granddaughter of this huge Hollywood producer and, you know, what happened? Where has she gone? She She's been gone for two weeks now and John Sugar, he's on the case. There's a beautiful sort of film noir Hollywood feel to an old gumshoe detective. Like it's, it's really great. This show is totally my bag. Like I, I, I felt going into it that I was going to be in good hands. I like a lot of the people who are involved here. We have, you know, James Cromwell is coming over after, you know, knocking things out of the park in succession. We've got Amy Ryan. Yeah, Amy Ryan, who is no stranger to murder mysteries galore here. Like, it's a great cast. I think it's a really good setup. We're going to dive in, though, to the mystery. What's going on here? What's working in these first couple of episodes? I think it's pretty clear from how we've started this that this is a show that you should be watching, but we'll get into more of the highs and lows. But be sure to hit that subscribe button for more sugar coverage mm -hmm. throughout this season. Also, earlier today on Netflix, another noir dropped in yeah. Ripley with Andrew Scott. It is fantastic. We did a full season review of that mm -hmm. because it all dropped at once. But check that out. And by subscribing, you guys help to support us to be able to make more of this content for you. Absolutely. Okay, let's get into John Sugar. Yes. I mean, they set up a really good vibe with this show. Like, if you yeah. are vibing with, like, the feeling of, like, old Hollywood and, like I said, like, old sort of detective vibes and feels, this this show is for you. Because we've got John Sugar, who is a detective, who seemingly was, like, he had taken his last case. But yeah. this case that's come up has a personal feel to it because we don't know exactly what's happened to his sister, Jen, yeah. but the girl that he's looking for, he finds people. That's his yeah. thing. And named Olivia, who is the granddaughter of this huge Hollywood producer, reminds him of his sister. And we don't know exactly what's happened yet. I'm sure it'll come out throughout the season. But I just love a good detective story where the detective has something in it that's personal. And then, you know, it always makes him get a little bit deeper into it. Yeah, this, this this setup is great. Like, it's so... I'm sure there are plenty of other detective stories that are like this, and you know what? For sure. I do not care, no. because this is a great setup. Anytime you give me, I'm a detective or a private investigator, this is one of my last cases, I gotta go out with the bang, oh, this also reminds me of my past, I'm instantly in. I don't need any other questions, I don't need any other information, you have yeah. a great investment. I genuinely believe through these couple of episodes, this is really important to me, that Sugar is at his core a good person. I think he is somebody who is empathetic. I think he is somebody who wants to help other people, who wants to make things a little bit better. I think he does have this romantic relationship with the city that he is a part of, where he thinks he understands it, that he and it are one and the same in a lot of ways. But yes, despite my feeling that he's a good person, which to me is important because I, I want to be able to root for him. I want to be able to be attached to him. I don't want to be tricked later on. It, he also still clearly does have some demons and maybe him being a good person is him trying to overcompensate or get redemption for some of that. Like there's clearly some darkness that has been alluded to throughout all of this that we've got, you know, Dopey Davey is off somewhere trying to dig all of this up. And, you know, Davey is, 
you know, Siegel's grandson, Olivia's brother, someone who seems like he's kind of an actor, but also just kind of an idiot. That's his other job. And I guess his third job is trying to find dirt on John Sugar because he doesn't like what he's doing. Yeah. And I mean, they're digging deeper into Davy, and we've seen that, you know, his father's Bernie has been kind of trying to cover up some stuff that Davy's been doing with some, I guess, actresses or something that's going on. There's some unsavory stuff that's been going on there, but they're getting back to John Sugar. There is something else that's going on with him because the, there's a theme that's been going on in these first two episodes that feels very much about addiction. Yeah. You know, we have Amy Ryan's character, Melanie, who was the stepmom to Olivia for a little while, who is dealing with, you know, addiction and alcohol, and she had been clean and had been going back and forth. Uh, it sounds like maybe something like that might have been going on with Sugar Sister Jen. It's hard to know. That has been going on with Olivia but it sounds like she has been on the other side of her addiction for at least two years, something like that. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, oh, she's probably just fallen back into it. And that's why we haven't seen her for a couple of weeks. People are covering up something. But we've also seen John yeah. taking a needle of something that looks like it's in this weird case that looks like dirty ice. Yeah. It's very strange. But we've seen him like dealing with like, holding his hand almost like an anxiety or something that's happened to him. I don't know if it has to do with whatever this either medication or drug or something that he's taking. We've seen him have like straight up visions that he thinks something is happening and there's blood all over him and he's waking up in the shower and there's nothing happening to him. We don't know, but I do feel like addiction is going to be a theme this season because we also saw everything that happened with Carl and the dog and yeah. you know that we ended up losing him even though Sugar was really trying to help him and was like here's some money call your sister and now he's got his dog Wiley like it's definitely going to be a bigger theme this season I think I think so and I think it's the perfect way to sort of represent a struggle for John Sugar, because I think we all can be sympathetic of people who are suffering with addiction or have some sort of history here, because we all have our own struggles. It doesn't compromise what we think of John Sugar as a character. For sure. It was just what I was wondering why he was spending so much time with this Carl character yeah. for him to end up ODing at the end of, you know, the second episode that I was kind of like, was this all just to get sugar with the dog? Because you could have had a man mm -hmm. and his dog from the beginning. You didn't have to go about it this route. But when you add in, you know, Melanie dealing with her addiction yeah. and Olivia had been dealing with hers and then Carl was with his and now we've got sugar with whatever he's injecting in himself it feels very much like that's really the story that they're telling and that's why tinfoil yeah. hat we met up with ruby who's somebody who seems like a bit of his handler almost he took on this job and she was yeah. like you didn't pass this through me. Like, you know, you're supposed to come through me first before you take on any more jobs. Your last job was supposed to be your last job. I think she's his sponsor. I think it's, it's a reasonable thing to wonder about. And I think in general, it would spell out why Sugar is so sympathetic towards Carl and why he wants to help Carl as much as he does. And I think that's what makes that scene and those that sequence of what happens to Carl so important because it sort of shows the empathy that Sugar has as a character and mm. he must he must know on some level that whatever is in his past is still dangerous enough that you know he can't be super open about it because it's something that could compromise his perception of him as a private investigator regardless of whether or not that's fair because i think a lot of us can sit back and be like okay just because you you know suffered from x y and z that does not make you incapable of doing your job now but this is a world where Everyone wants to do whatever they can to get dirt on other people. And he is working against, you know, a group of people who at this point seem to have a good bit of money. And I think what's fascinating about this whole Siegel family right now is that, you know, you've got James Cromwell. And I, I want to believe that his intentions are legitimate and that he wants to find out what happened to Olivia. But like this rest of his family, if, at least if we're talking about Bernie and Davy here. 
they kind of suck and they don't really have any sort of positive motives as far as I've seen. And they don't seem to be cooperative at all. And it feels like finding that family feud and sort of trying to resolve all that, it's going to be a hard struggle for sugar, especially when there are certain people with money that can try to dig up stuff on his past at the same time. Yeah. I think that it's also going to be interesting to sort of watch this love story unfold that sugar has with Hollywood, because there is a lot of sort of cuts back and forth to old movies, how he feels driving the old car, the, you know, the feeling of just Hollywood in general. And he's expressed his love of movies, how deeply he is in it. Even the gun that Ruby gave him where he's like, no, I won't carry a gun. Oh, it's from this movie held by this actor. <laughs> okay. Where do I sign up to hold this gun? <laughs> like, it's very clear how much he has this love affair with Hollywood. So for his last case to be like, this huge producer that's, you know, got his granddaughter missing, but there's people in the family that are covering up, you know, the seediness of Hollywood. Yeah. This story has been tried to be told so many times, especially in the past couple of years with more and more coming out of Hollywood, the things that have been buried. It feels like so far they're doing a decent job of sort of showing somebody who's got blinders on to Hollywood because of how much he loves loves hollywood yeah that here is a family that has a lot of dark secrets that are going on that have to do with the business and my fear here is that through this show he's gonna get so into all of this that he's not gonna see the forest through the tree so mm -hmm. what we basically know here if we're to sort of put up our metaphorical cork board here mm -hmm. for the case olivia is missing and yes. she's been missing for a little while now not like you know for extreme extreme amounts yeah, of time like two weeks yeah but she's been missing and her mother rachel k is an actress who died in a car accident yes. and you know there were some suspicious circumstances all around that and there are some suspicious circumstances around what was going on with Olivia, who was finding her voice, who was starting to, you know, mm -hmm. unearth some stuff that was going on. She's not the only person who seems to be gone here. We also have these other characters, Clifford Carter, Carmen Vasquez, that leads into a lot of what's going on at the end of episode two, mm -hmm. where it sort of seems like, okay, there are a lot of people who know at least certain elements of things. Like, it's clear that, you know, Melanie, Amy Ryan's character knows a part of this as well. I think yes. <laughs> it is very easy for all of us to sort of be like, okay, the seagulls are in on this specific thing. You know, Davey or Bernie or Melanie, like they may all know what happened to Olivia, where she is, what she was up to. And I think because of the allure of unearthing these Hollywood secrets, Sugar's going to be drawn into this world. Like my, my fear is that yes, they are all hiding things because they all seem to be very questionable people, to put it mildly. Yeah. But it's possible that the actual truth is somewhere else, but he's not going to be able to see that because he's so focused on this. I feel like Olivia is in some sort of hiding. I think she figured out something that was happening to her mom in Hollywood and figured out something connected to this sort of mysterious car accident. And she started to figure some things out. And I think a lot of it is all connected to, you know, Carmen's death, you know, Clifford, who was found in Olivia's trunk. Yeah. And then all of a sudden wasn't. Yeah. Why did Sugar leave that body in that trunk? Like, <laughs> really, really, yeah. you know, you go back and Ruby's like, you need to clean up that body. All right, I'll go back. Okay, the, the body's now gone. You know, like, why would you just leave that like that? I don't know, whatever. It, it was questionable, to say <laughs> the least. It was questionable, I, but yeah. I just feel like <clears throat> she knows what is going on. And I think she knows the secrets of Bernie. Davy, Melanie, I think was helping with some of it. And I think kind of leading her in some better ways to sort of pull back maybe what happened to her mom, what's happening to some other women in Hollywood. And Olivia was starting to dig deeper into it. Seems like Melanie was kind of digging into that as well. But now all of a sudden Melanie's pulling back. She's like, yeah, I had a talk with Bernie and now all of a sudden I don't know anything. And she's <laughs> like, what? But when we were at the end and we saw 
Carmen's sister was being questioned by questionable guy in a black shirt who's like, where's Clifford? I need my guy. Yeah. He's got a phone that's got information on it that has to do with me. So where's my guy? He holds up a picture of Melanie. So Melanie is very deeply involved in whatever is going on. Yeah, she is. And I think that's this is what this show does really well through these two episodes. I think with any murder mystery in general, we want to come out of the very start of it with multiple different people we can hypothesize about. We don't right. want to think that a murder mystery is just going to be some straight line. So, okay, we've got Melanie, who's yeah. got to be on the board. Yes. Bernie's on the board. Yes. Davey is on the board, though I do say this. Nah. Davey seems too dumb to actually be able to pull something off. I... Yeah, he's just he's just a goon. Yeah, but that's fine. I, I like having a good goon in the story here. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's... Maybe the goon act is all an act. Maybe he's smarter than he's really letting on. I doubt it, but I'm throwing it out there as a possibility. It's also possible we haven't even met the person who's responsible for all of this yet. But I like the idea that we have multiple different characters that we can sort of sit around and think about at this point. It's very much the current season of American Horror Story. They're all in on it. Uh, okay, I... I will at least give sugar credit for this. <laughs> I believe your perception of Hollywood about a thousand <laughs> times more than I believe the American Horror Story presentation oh of Hollywood. Oh my goodness. Which, according to American Horror Story, every person in Hollywood is either a part of some sort of like secret cabal, is like killing other people, is like paying everybody off to win awards. It's like, sure, there's some of that. This world is not squeaky clean, but no. it's... This at least feels realistic enough that I can buy into it and I'm not distracted by it. Yeah. Now, I think, in general, is this mystery going to be one that has to move forward pretty quickly? I think so. There's no guarantee of another season. I think this is a situation where they're going to have to balance furthering along the case with also giving us more information about Sugar's past along the way. Because there have to be these sort of personal stakes for him where if he doesn't figure this out soon, he's going to be in deep doo-doo. And nobody wants to be in deep doo-doo in this world. Yeah, my hope is, is that whatever ended up happening to his sister, Jen, yeah. that maybe that story and that mystery is not completely wrapped up and that him taking on this case with Olivia, who reminds him of Jen and reminds him of the story of what happened yeah. to her and everything like that will bring us throughout this season where if we do move into a season two, that that's where we're bringing it to. That's like, okay, this is supposed to be the last case, but yeah. it's something that's reminding me of my sister so it's a little bit personal but not really personal but then by the time we get to the end of the season now it's personal and we're moving into that yeah and i would be i would be thrilled if they're able to go in that direction in general i'm just thrilled that whether it's apple netflix you know amc with monster spade like we're actually getting yeah. a real commitment to this sort of style to this sort of art form yeah. that what didn't feel like it was there on this level for a good while. And I have no way of knowing whether or not Sugar is going to pay all this off. Like, the ending may make zero sense at all, and I'm just getting my hopes up. But I'm very happy with where we are at present. Yeah, no, I am as well. I think that the story's really good. They've given me just enough that I feel like I can get my footing on what's going on. I normally don't love that they give more than one episode right away. I'm not a binge yeah. watcher unless it's catfish. I will watch <laughs> all the catfish all day on my couch. Oh boy. But um, I am glad that they gave these two episodes back to back. I think it was, it was just enough to yeah. give me the, the footing that I needed to get really excited about the next episode. Yeah. And they're at least, they're not going to do whatever some of these other streamers are doing where it's like, okay, now we're going to give you four more the next week or something. We're going to have no, time no, 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 to no. sit around, to think about this, to theorize. Okay, who do you think is behind all of this? Do you think that Olivia is dead? Do you think she's in hiding? I think hiding. I think she's alive. I think hiding too, because I, th I think the show is much more interesting if she's in hiding. And I, th I think it all... Okay, here's where we get really crazy. I think James Cromwell was responsible. I think he mm. actually hired Sugar thinking he can lead him down the road to putting it on somebody else, including his own son, who he, you know, is competent enough as a director, but also seems to be doing enough other shady stuff that I think he seems to think that he can probably pin whatever he's really up to on his son Keep it all hidden from the masses here, and he can continue to do 
what he wants to do moving forward. And he looks like the good guy because he's brought sugar in in the first place. I think he's brought sugar in to find Olivia because Olivia knows too much about the murder of her mom and what's going on. Because I think he's probably responsible for that car crash and Olivia's figured it out. And now Olivia's hiding out and he's like, I need to get my hands on her and she needs to die in a car crash as well. And then... Let's make movies. That's what I think is going on. I think he's trying to get his hands on Olivia to like make her look like she's OD'd or is in some sort of car crash so he can move on. Well, rest assured, we will be here to piece through the rest of this mystery moving forward. We are glad you guys are with us. Yes. All right. So hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss anything more here. Also, join our Patreon. We have live streams over there we're going to be talking all about sugar yep. rest assured of that thank you to our patrons we'll see you thank guys you. here next time